president of North Dakota State University is actually taking federal funds and siphoning off to Planned Parenthood, even though the North Dakota legislature has forbidden that. My question is simply this. If you're taking money against the legislature's will, against the will of the North Dakota people, and you're funneling it to Planned Parenthood, how are you not a racist? Since Planned Parenthood was started by a eugenist, and it is the single largest killer of black babies in the country today. It seems to me that by partnering with an abortion mill, you're also, Mr. President, engaging in racism. I'm Dr. Duke, he's Alex, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Katie is off maternalizing, so Alex Newman is joining us all this week in studio. Glad to have him. Today, we start with a very serious story. The, the president of North Dakota State University will not apologize for the school support of Planned Parenthood. The, the legislature in North Dakota is trying to ban public money going to these abortion mills like Planned Parenthood. He, in despite of the legislature, is vowing to keep it going. What does that have to do with racism? Everything. Who is Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood? She was a virulent anti-black eugenicist in supporting, there are a lot of places President Bastiani, where you can send your money if all you want to do is kill babies. But by sending that money against the will of the legislature to Planned Parenthood, you are underwriting a racist eugenicist who wanted to use abortion to get rid of the black race. You cannot percent pretend otherwise. If you were sending your money to an organization that aborted babies, and it was called the Mengele Foundation, and you could say all you want, but, but the Mengele Foundation, they're doing good work. They're aborting babies in the name of women's health. You would be run out of North Dakota on a rail. You should be now. She is every bit the eugenicist that Mengele was. She just didn't have the access to black babies that she could kill herself. What are you doing there, North Dakota State University, by employing as your president, and it's not just the fact that the, fa the, country, the, the company was founded in eugenics. No entity in America today kills more black people than Planned Parenthood. I'm right about this, aren't I, Alex? You are absolutely right. It makes the, uh, the lynchings uh, pale in comparison. Uh, the most dangerous place for a black human being in the United States is in its mother's womb. And that is because Planned Parenthood is butchering in the most barbarous manner imaginable these little black children all across the country and there's been studies done on this Planned Parenthood deliberately sets up its abortion mills in minority neighborhoods they target black women they target immigrant women let me hop in here you've heard from Black Lives Matter how gun stores and liquor stores are planted in black neighborhoods it's a conspiracy <laughs> right black uh, gun stores and liquor stores to prey upon black people in their homes in their home neighborhoods what alex said is exactly right planned parenthood is also set up strategically alongside those gun stores alongside those liquor stores to kill black babies on behalf of white Presidents of universities like Dean Bashiani, right? That's exactly right. And uh, when I was at the University of Florida, we had a, a pro-life group there, and I had learned a little bit about Margaret Sanger, but it was hard to believe. You know, what, really, this lady founded an organization that's getting millions of our tax dollars. So we actually went to the library and we rent, we checked out her books, and we found some of these quotes that are. I mean, they're just overtly racist. There's no sugar coating it. She was a eugenicist. She thought uh, defectives, as she viewed them, human weeds, as she referred to minorities. She should not be able to reproduce. They should be sterilized. Uh, it, I mean, unbelievable sickness. And so we would put her quotes up on these big poster boards, and, and we'd get outraged, uh, you know, students. Hey, how dare you say something? Oh, no, I didn't say that. This is from Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood. It's grotesque. Uh, of course, there's that infamous letter. Uh, she had started this thing called the Negro Project, where they actually uh, hired a bunch of black preachers and ministers to go out and preach the good news of exterminating your own race uh, through 
contraception, sterilization, things like that. And then she said, you know, we don't want the word to go out that we're trying to exterminate the Negro race. But yeah, you know, human weeds. Yeah, we, we really got. She talks about we're not going to make racial progress until we implement eugenics. These are the same ideas that Adolf Hitler, the National Socialist mass murderer, would put into brutal practice not long after Margaret Sanger was preaching these things to the Ku Klux Klan. So, pampered, privileged, whiny students at the— Just, just say students. I think yeah, we, <laughs> all the rest is implied. Yeah, right. we get it. Now we know what the students are. Yeah, so, uh, since they are most likely not paying for their, what, passes at least as an education, uh, they have decided to vote in favor of reparations for slaves, uh, or for the descendants of slaves, uh, because, of course, they know that their parents and the federal government and ultimately the American taxpayer is funding this. But so they voted to be very generous with our money and hand out reparations to people who were never slaves because maybe their great, 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 great grandpa might have been a slave. Yeah, you know, and I want to go back to that previous story briefly to talk about this one uh, with, with President Bresciani. President Bresciani, brown students have just voted to pay reparations to the legacy holders of slavery, those who suffered or those whose families may have suffered. Can I ask you, instead of sending money to Planned Parenthood to kill more black babies, maybe you and North Dakota State University, maybe you ought to pay reparations to the families of black babies who've been slain. The genocide against black babies that has been unleashed by Planned Parenthood and their eugenicist founder. Don't you think, President Bastiani, you owe, if, if these kids in Brown University are willing to sacrifice and, re, re, and pay back what white people have done to black people, shouldn't you, instead of sending taxpayer money to Planned Parenthood, which is used to kill black babies, maybe you should stop doing that like the North Dakota legislature says and start paying reparations to the families who killed babies under the direction of Planned Parenthood. Yeah, it, it really is grotesque. And uh, if, if you look at the margin that uh, this thing passed by, the first question was whether the university should make, and I'm quoting here, all possible efforts to identify the descendants of enslaved Africans who were entangled with and or afflicted by the university and Brown family and their associates. And that passed by 89%. So almost did. nine out of 10 of these overgrown, spoiled brats are willing to spend your money having investigators run around the country trying to do family trees and trace back you know, 15 generations. Uh, and then the second question, by should the way, they receive reparations? Let's take them one at a time. So isn't that racist in itself to force descendants of slaves to actually have to prove it with a family tree. <laughs> that isn't would that, sound pretty racist it, to me. Isn't that like, you know, demanding a DNA test? <laughs> I mean, you, you're going to have to take their word for it or else you're a bigot. Oh, that's right. Wouldn't that be the case? You'd be challenging the experience, the, the lived, lived experience. Yeah. Exactly right. And so don't ask for any kind of proof. Don't have to prove it genetically. What are these kids are so backwards, right? <laughs> They're they, racist. What they ought to do is say, hey, if you in your lived experience believed you have suffered under the racism of Brown University or your ancestors have, then by all means, you get a piece of the pie. Wouldn't that be more equitable? That, that absolutely uh, would be. And, you know, it reminds me of that uh, investigation that was launched by the U.S. Department of Education under Betsy DeVos that was positively brilliant. Uh, I was not a big Betsy DeVos fan, but her investigation into these ridiculous clown shows masquerading as universities where they said, hey, you're, you're on the one hand claiming you are systemically racist, and then on the other hand, you're signing these federal forms each year promising that you're not racist. One or the other is not true. Either you're racist or you're not racist. If you are racist, as you claim you are in public, right? you have systematic racism at your university, then you're lying under oath when you're signing these federal forms promising that you're not racist. So which is it going to be? Hand over the money, please. And, and I think we need more of that. Hoist them by their own petard. Yeah. And of course, then that's not going to happen. And the <laughs> other thing, which uh, remind me, which of the, because it just escaped my head, which of the founding fathers said, we will remain in a republic, the United States, 
until the American people figure out they can vote each other other people's money. Yeah, they actually, that, that quote goes back a that? long way. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, was it it's, Jefferson it's attributed that? to him. Right, that, uh, that, that as, until when Americans finally figure out they can vote themselves other people's money, and this is what the woke kids at Brown are doing. They're not gonna, they don't think they're going to have to pay for any of this. They think that Brown is rich. They think Brown was made rich by exploitation. They think they're going to get their tax breaks. They're going to get their scholarships. That's not going to affect them. And somebody else is going to pay for it, right? That's what they thought they've done. If you had said, okay, and what would they, the honest thing would be, as students at Brown, we take advantage of that racism too. It's not a Brown problem. It's a us at Brown problem, right? <laughs> we are, don't they keep telling you that if you're, was I trying to make the point about pr President De Bastiani? If you're in bed with racist organizations, that we keep hearing, you're a racist, aren't you? So why are you content simply to vote the other people's money, the school's money for reparations? How much of what you pay every year should we add a, half tax percent on, or by that I mean make you pay half of, pay what your tuition is and your fees, and then let's say it's $50,000, then tack on a $25,000 tax, a reparations tax. Oh, that's too much? Is that too much, you think? <laughs> let's say just $5,000 for every student. And you're paying $75,000, $80,000. When you factor everything in at Brown, you're paying something like that a year. So okay, so $5,000 on top of everything else you pay, Every year, you will be taxed $5,000, and that money will go to somebody, no tra family trees involved, who said they were negatively affected by Brown. How about that? Would you vote? Would, do you think the vote would be 89%? I, I would take it a step further, Duke, because the reality is most of these pampered children are still mooching off their parents, right. and they're still mooching off they're the They're racist tax parents, right? Exactly. And so uh, what I would say is you wait until you graduate, you wait until you get your first job, then you start paying the reparations tax that you voted for, back when you were a whiny over I like this. Student. Let me take it one step further. That if these kids really wanted to put their bona fides on display, show just how woke they are, here's what you do. <laughs> you identify a poor, struggling black kid in a community college. And what you do is you pay the $75,000 a year for Brown. You then go occupy the college, the two-year college. You pay, have now paid Brown for that black student not to get a crappy two-year education, <laughs> but to get the Brown education. Switch it, right? You volunteer to go study at that two-year college and pay that, and, and let the black kid pay that, right, that tuition. Meanwhile, you've paid your Brown tuition and you just swap places. How about that? That would be a real impactful thing, wouldn't it? I think that, it's a great that idea. That would show you just because what you really want, Brown students, is to virtue signal here. What better virtue signaling than that? Can you imagine how proud of yourself you would be? How the national news would, would just radiate joy. <laughs> I paid, well, dad and daddy and mummy. Daddy and mummy. Those racist fascists who voted for Trump. It's Ivy League. Daddy and mummy <laughs> paid $85,000. And we don't use daddy and mommy anymore at Duke. I'm sorry. Uh, they I'm, are but parental but units. The, 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 we can't use daddy and mummy. <laughs> daddy and mummy sold their yacht <laughs> to send me to Brown. Oh, yeah. And I actually swapped places with an African-American person in her first year at a community college. And she's getting a Brown education, and now I'm getting a community college education. Uh, think about the bona fides, Brown kids. So if you want to know how oppressed people are, uh, especially people like Angela Davis, you need to see this next story. We've got the University of Arkansas, really the uh, daycare center masquerading as the University of Arkansas, as uh, the great uh, Oklahoman explained. Uh, they have paid the violent communist revolutionary Angela Davis $200 per minute to shower her wisdom on these poor victims Black of this insane Black Lives Matter asylum. is profitable. Oh yes. Go back to that first picture real quick. Is that is that is that really is that Foxy Day? Is that Foxy Brown? Way back in the day. Is that Foxy Brown or is that Angela, Angela Davis? Davis? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> right. All right. So fast forward. Two hundred dollars a minute for a communist supporting terrorist thug to speak on college campuses. Yet Ben Shapiro, 
gets heckled off stage. Yeah. Michael Knowles gets heckled off stage. Yeah. And, you know, it, we saw how the far left uh, reacted to the mostly peaceful protest at the Capitol on January 6th. They had nonstop meltdowns. They were apoplectic. They wanted to start rounding up Trump supporters and putting them in concentration camps because how dare they have a mostly peaceful protest at the Capitol where a window got broken and a podium got moved and uh, AOC almost died. How dare they do that? Well, uh, fun fact, Angela Davis... Uh, during her communist revolutionary days, was involved in invading a courtroom, and this invasion of the courtroom resulted in the deaths of multiple people. May I correct you? The liberal media, if they tossed us at, told us, taught us anything, the liberal media, it's not an invasion, it's an insurrection. <laughs> right? right? Use the word, <laughs> use the mantra. Angela Davis engaged in all sorts of insurrections. I get it, my, my Doug Henning voice, right? The way he used to say, uh, it's magic. Insurrection <laughs> is the word of the day. There is a picture of an insurrectionist, a violent, murderous insurrectionist who, you, who, have, who attacked federal buildings, the insurrectionist, who's a hero now to the left. That's right. And, An and again, absolute hero. Yeah. And, and I just want to be clear here, guys. She was in 1970 uh, arrested in New York City in connection with a shootout that occurred on August 7th in a San Rafael, California courtroom. OK, uh, these communist revolutionaries invaded and uh, disrupted a court proceeding where people were in some pretty significant trouble. And somehow, she gets paid $20,000 to give a speech at the University of Arkansas, whereas anybody who was involved in the mostly peaceful protest at the Capitol, where nobody died, where nobody was shot, I guess a couple nobody people died, was murdered. And nobody was murdered, uh, where uh, the well, only person shot was one of the people. Except an activist. Right, right. The only people shot were the ones who were uh, doing the mostly peaceful protest. Uh, now they are all terrorists who need to be re-educated and put into concentration camps and cleared out of the nation. The double standards are incredible. Well, and let's look at a video of how clueless college kids are when it comes to these issues. So I'm not sure if you're aware, but Angela Davis is coming to our campus. Uh, have you ever read of uh, Have you ever read Angela Davis's works? Have you ever studied her uh, history? No clue. No clue who it is. Well, she is a former Black Panther who, in 1970, armed a couple of uh, of Black Panther uh, members, and as a result, they stormed the courthouse and a judge was killed. And she was also a former Communist Party leader in the 1970s. It's educational about our history, and it already happens. Like we can't change that now. And, like, it was probably a good thing that it happened. As far as I know, she is a very um, dedicated activist. I think a lot of times on college campuses, you live in kind of a bubble, and people expect for you to know about certain things and learn about certain things and not others. And I think it's really important to expose students to these kinds of issues. I think it's kind of cool. Like, I would, I would want to go see what she has to say. My first thought is the one student who said, we can't do anything about it now. Right? And it was probably a good thing we that it happened. It's a good thing yeah, that it happened. Yeah, murdering federal judges. Can you yeah. imagine if you were on a college campus, people who looked like us on a college campus now saying things like, yeah, you know, um, there's nothing we can do about the Constitution now. I mean, it was written. And maybe it was a good thing it was happened all those racists wrote that Constitution. If you just replace you know, communist revolutionary killer, yep. uh, Soviet with agent. With founding father. Right, or, or with, slave holder, with conservative yeah. activist. Right. Yep. She's a really dedicated activist. Yeah, the Ku Klux Klan members are really dedicated activists. Does that mean we should invite them to college campus and pay them $20,000 for a speech? Let me rephrase it. Do you know that Dr. Duke Pesto is coming to speak at uh, uh, our, our university? Never heard of him. Who's Dr. Well, Duke Pesto? Well, 30 years ago, Dr. Duke Pesta actually invaded a court where a judge was killed and he he it, it, it empowered certain right-wing activists to actually engage in acts of terrorist terrorism huh interesting sounds like we should pay him twenty thousand dollars a minute <laughs> right. can you imagine the kids saying i'd like to hear that <laughs> well, that, that sounds kind of interesting do you think this the, the girl who, who said that uh uh well we can't do anything about it and it was good that it happened yeah, maybe it was good that we we need to be exposed to these kind of things it what 
hypocritical garbage all of this is. And it just shows you what we've said in the Dr. Duke show from the beginning. You think your kids are getting an education for all that money at college. They are learning literally, I'm going to use that word, knowing exactly what it means. Literally, they're not getting an education. They're getting a worldview that allows them not to have to think and make distinctions at all. All right, it's instant classic time at the Dr. Duke Show where we try to give you something uplifting about the, to, to counter the stupidity of what's going on in education in America and around the world. And this is St. Augustine Week, the week we look at the uplifting words of St. Augustine. He was born in 354 A.D., died in 430 A.D. He is the first great father, quote-unquote, of the, of the Christian faith. Uh, wrote, he, was a, he was a pagan. He was a, a Roman through and through. Uh, he lived in Africa. He was a professor of classical pagan literature. And when he found Christianity, largely by the influence of his mother, who is St. Monica, uh, his mother became a Christian first, and she kept pushing her son to to turn his immense intellect to consider this new religion. And when he finally did it, Monica did a wonderful thing. She converted to Christianity, one of the great minds in human history. And here's another one of those great quotes from Augustine. I ask you this question. Are we, with all of our confusion and amorality and all of our social justice, are we closer to the truth of reality or was St. Augustine 1,600 years ago? He's talking here about that passage in the Gospels where Jesus condemns wealth, where Jesus says, it is harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than it is for a camel to enter the eye of the needle. And yet, Augustine does something really interesting. He says, Jesus basically did not condemn wealth for wealth's sake. Wealth is not the problem. It is your attitude towards wealth. And Augustine comes back and brilliantly points out, if you're poor and have a bad attitude— you're just as bad as the rich man. Here's what he says. But just a minute, Mr. Poor Man. Consider whether you can, in fact, enter the kingdom of heaven. Are you going to get in? What if you're poor and also happen to be greedy? It's called socialism, right? What if you're poor and you're greedy for other people's money? What if you're sunk in destitution and at the same time on fire with greed for what everybody else has. So if that's what you're like, Mr. Poor Man, whoever you are that are poor, it's not because you haven't wanted to be rich, but because you haven't been able to. In other words, you'd be rich if you could. You're greedy. You want what other people have. You don't want rich people to go away. You want to be rich yourself. It's not because you haven't wanted to be rich, but because you haven't been able to become rich. So God doesn't inspect your means. He will not look at your balance, your bank balance. He will observe your will. So if you're poor and want to eat the rich, if you're poor and want to take back what they've stolen from you so you could live a high life, you're, you're not the kind of poor man that's going to be saved. All right, if you're a fan of the show, please consider a one-time tax-deductible donation to support Patriot Club, our Patriot Club, and we'll send you our signature Tumblr. Visit patriotclub.us, that's patriotclub.us, and a very quick reminder to please download our Freedom Project Media app. Simply search Freedom Project Media in your app store now, and make sure to allow notifications so we can send you our content. And that wraps up the show for today. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke, he's Alex. Until next time, stay away from Planned Parenthood, my friends.